What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 142 of the Chumpcast. Mark's childhood friend, John, joins us this week to talk about how Mark peed the bed until he was 24. I guess we'll also review Detective Pikachu. You can find us on all social media platforms at the Chumpcast. You can also call or text us at 847-920-6107. Thanks to our friends at Family Video for sponsoring the show. If you collect DVDs or Blu-rays, you can get some awesome deals through thechumpcast.com slash familyvideo. They have ridiculously low prices on new releases, and they're always updating their selection. I'm looking right now at copies of Into the Spider-Verse, aka the best movie of 2018, Aquaman, Glass, and way more, all for under 10 bucks. Plus, it helps out the show. You can find our merch at thechumpcast.com. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash thechumpcast for all sorts of bonus content and more goodies. Now leave me alone, it's Thrones time. It's gonna be blurry. Eventually. Yeah, dude, just take the Patreon money and buy us a webcam or a camera that doesn't suck. I know, this is super We're literally blurry. supposed to be reinvesting that money. Yeah, super blurry. Instead Sorry. of you just... I don't, what are you even buying with our Patreon money? Just more Funko I'm just, Pops? I'm just hoarding our tens of dollars that we're getting per month in Patreon. You send me pictures every week of the Funko Pops you bought. That's what you're doing with this money. <laughs> you know what Funko Pops are? I have no idea. I don't even know what Patreon <laughs> is. I just see your we were supposed to buy that money. brick sex doll. This one is really lifelike, but it looks nothing like brick. Yeah, we were gonna buy a sex doll and blow that it up look, and just have it like brick space. That look, oh, you were just. It would literally just sit there like this and like with the mouth open, except it would be brick. Uh, so you're the replacement, I guess. So and you were just gonna leave it here, obviously. Well, yeah, like we'd put a microphone in front of it. So Mark, I wouldn't touch it and we'd use it when you weren't here. That's what I was gonna say. I, you don't know what's going on, so I probably wouldn't touch it. Oh, Darian's already in the stream. What's yeah. up, Darian? Darian, let's go. Uh, John, you want to introduce yourself, or do we just? I do, I'm John. Hi, John. John's Hi. John's one of my childhood friends. Actually, my only childhood friend. You Best didn't have friends when you were a kid. Yeah. What kind of person was Mark in high school? Like, did he have any friends, or did he just complain about annoying as fuck? He was, I'll tell annoying. you what, though. He was too busy. He had to mow his lawn about every other day because he sucked at sports. So his highlight was in eighth grade. He had a home run off me on a softball field that the fence is 200 fucking feet. And so he sucked other than that, though. So every time he sucked, when we were on the way home, it was me, him, and his dad in the minivan. And his dad goes, you know what you're doing when you get home? <laughs> Mowing the fucking lawn. And I was like, all right, have fun and with I'd that. Be I'm like, like, Let me out of the car. And I'd walk home like five miles. i go to the park. And then you'd be like, you're still yeah. mowing the lawn. <laughs> you might as well just stay in the car and mow the fucking lawn, Mark. Right. Dude. I that can was, see your dad yelling at you like that. That though. was his childhood, though, so now it all makes sense. That's yeah, cool. and I had, I had two sisters, so I'd just show up to John's house uninvited and be like, what's up? They'd be eating dinner. I'd be like, no, I don't need to eat. Just stand there watching them. I'd be like, all right, John, let's go check out Pokemon cards. Jesus, dude, you sound like a real winner. I was a real winner. That's how you ended up where you are today on a podcast. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Medium popularity. <laughs> I had I had extreme luck when it came to any trading card game. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but I came up on some awesome Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Me and John used to get really into Yu-Gi-Oh. Can I point out... Fred, Fred, you don't need to try to put Mark on like that. He sucked at basketball. <laughs> Yo, Fred, I did suck at basketball. So one of the things that Mark likes to say is that he could beat me at any sport. I could beat you at any sport. Name one that you could beat me at. Basketball. That is a 0% probability. I could beat you at basketball. I could beat you at golf easily. Well, go, first of all, golf's not a sport. It's a hobby. All right. Tell Tiger Woods that. Shout out Tiger. Gladly, I would tell Tiger Woods <laughs> that. What's he going to do? Beat me up? All right. Hold on. Go back to the Yu-Gi-Oh! What what year was that? Probably six or seven. Two thousand seventeen. We, we, like, we were like eighteen years no, old. <laughs> no, we, we <laughs> no, we weren't. I'd, I'd say it was like I'd say it was like two thousand three. We we're probably in like seven, six or seventh grade. Yeah, Mark. We were savages. First off, parents had to love that the Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh cards came out because a birthday present cost eight dollars. Now you got a kid one pack of cards, right? And it was the best thing ever. So, but mom, they didn't because I asked for Pokemon cards every fucking day, and. My mom tried explaining, I'm getting you 10 cardboard cards and they're costing me $9 a pop and I would just flip my shit. I'd be like, I don't care. I fucking need them. Okay. Jesus, you so, sound like a terrible child. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. But so the point of the story, it's Mark's birthday. My mom goes, what does Mark want? And he just obviously wants a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like, I think we we're past the Pokemon craze. And I'm like, he just wants a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So, John, why? I, no, no just let him know. tell the story. No. The story. So I'm fucking. I'm all about Yu-Gi-Oh. 
and you get Mark a pack of. Cards. You gotta, you gotta tell some backstory as to before going into. No, like, I like the no happened. context. All right, kind of all right, fine. fine. So no backstory. We we get my mom's like here's his pack, here's his birthday present. Go give it to him. I walk four houses over. Hi, Mrs. Oscar. Give me some shit. This is Mark's birthday present. He opens it. He's so excited, even though it was eight dollars. I still don't get it. Like you're used to getting like a twenty five dollar gift card or something, but we're excited over eight dollars of fucking pieces of paper. That's brilliant, Mark. Mark opens it up. So he's like, oh, nice. I'm like, good. That card sucks. Good. That that card sucks. I'm like, fuck yes, mom. You picked the right pack, right? He that goes to the next card. I see the holograph. I already see it. It's what it was an ancient dragon or thousand year old dragon, no, whatever his name. Thousand dragon. Dude, thousand your dragon. Heart just dropped. I was I almost fucking murdered somebody. This is like I was like, I've wanted that card for that was his number one you ever. I've wanted it forever. And he got the holograph, everything. Like this was you And I, the first thing I did was I looked up and just looked right at John and I just said Sick. I was like, <laughs> I, was I like, doubt that you said sick in 2003. <laughs> he didn't. But as I had tears in my eyes, I said, "Happy birthday, Mark." And I said, "Get out of my and house." Then I I'm walked. About to put I walked this in home. My, then I went home, putting this in my binder with all my other fucking holographics. So glad that Yu Gi Oh just totally missed me. What is that? The nerdiest thing you guys enjoyed when you were kids? I felt like oh. Yu Gi Oh though, like you could actually. I never like played Pokemon. I played Yu Gi Oh though. Dude, we we got into because it was some, easier without those fucking power cards. We got into some are, the you know? HP and stuff. Yeah, you didn't have yeah, to yeah. use it, so it just was easier to play. What were those? Man, they were called Rumble Bots. They were popular for maybe three months, like right around Christmas time. I don't even know. I don't. Even Rem- remember. You don't remember those? They came with trading cards. You would swipe them in the Rumble Bot, and you had a remote, and you'd fight, and they like just no, punch yeah. and shit. Ah, dude, how do you remember? Rock'em Sock'em Robots? No, they were Rumble Bots. Are you guys too young for Pogs? Somebody Uh, that I work with brought that up, and I I was like, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, that's probably the dumbest thing I ever had. Yo, Tyler, what's up, dude? I had a... I like. I totally fell for it because it said it was gold, but it was like cheap-ass gold-plated. It was a Mortal Kombat Pog Slammer. It was like the pride of my collection. Yeah, no. Yeah. I have no idea. He was trying to explain to me. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What were the best action figures growing up, though? Power Rangers, no. not close. The best action figures. Yeah. They were like half rubber. Dude, he's trying. Taco this Bell is had a promotion. Objection. This is it. a leading question. <laughs> I, and I honestly do. It was I'm, an animated show. Uh, Mortal Kombat. It was about an I, animal that lives in the sea. SpongeBob. Yeah, what the fuck? Street are you Sharks, dude. I don't remember that either. You don't know what Street Sharks were? I don't remember those toys. Oh my god, dude. Biker mice from Mars. What what are you poor, dude? You didn't have a street shark? You're the one that was coming over for dinner. <laughs> yeah, I know. What, what like, are you me. Poor? <laughs> I contend that that is the most Mark sentence ever. No, John. What are you poor? John has been he has been drinking too much over the last few My, years. How don't you know what a street shark is? Nobody gives a shit. Street sharks. The show sucked. Yes, agreed. Yeah, but they had the fucking sick ass uh, monster truck with the teeth. What does that have to do with anything? You don't remember these guys? Okay. Yes, I remember. Okay. Yes, I do. I don't remember having them. Oh. All right. If you're I'm in the sorry, stream man. right now, send us whatever <laughs> the best or dumbest toy you had when when you were a kid was. I had the turtle van, and it shot pizzas out of like a pizza launcher that was That's up on top sick. of it. Yep. That it was is pretty tight. sick, and my mom got rid of it, and I'm definitely not bitter about it at all. I'm bitter about it. Yeah. Damn. I don't remember what we were talking about. We were just talking about toys, and I'm just thinking all of... Of all the toys. What's this? To News to us. Uh, Moving on. Oh, look, my dog is coming down the stairs because somebody definitely opened the gate for him that it wasn't supposed to. What's up, Brandon? Great. Uh, so we got a whole bunch of trailers this week. Remy's just going to get up in everybody's face it's all right good. now. I'm not allergic fine. to you or anything. Okay. Y'all old as fuck. Yeah, Very. we are. Deal with it. Uh, how about this Watchmen trailer? Mark, what'd you think? This is technically a DC property, this is under your purview. Yeah, it's cool. It gives us the that look ten years later or whatever. It, it's very open ended. It's supposed to be really starting ten it. years after the, you know, the the end of where the Snyder movie ended. Yep. Right. And Kelly's Kelly's in the in the chat saying that she had a Furby. I mean, she spelled it wrong, but that's okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> Kelly, don't ever spell Furby wrong again. Do you think like I'll see you at home? He's not gonna. It's fine. <laughs> Do you think like uh, somebody could throw the batteries in a Furby right now and it would just start spewing obscenities at them? Like you lock me in a fucking closet for 20 years. My aunt has a Furby that still sits on her TV at home. That is. And it what? still works. 
because is it like one of those old cabinet TVs where it's the wood that is like built the speakers are built into the TV because she did, she's stuck in the 90s you're di- you're dead on she doesn't even watch TV it has a big just it's not even a crack it's just a streak you know when the pixels start going out it's literally her TV but she has a Furby she doesn't interact with it I kind of feel bad for the Furby it just sits there on the TV it still works it's been sitting there with the same batteries for the last like 15 years you could still go up to it and the eyes will open up and you're just like Jesus that's terrifying yeah so back to Watchmen though you see like a whole bunch of Rorschachs I guess they're kind of emulating him this is like the Batman I'm not wearing hockey pads thing right yeah there's like 20 of them John you've never seen Watchmen right no idea what you're talking about (laughs) why are you even on this show (laughs) that's a good question you just came here to talk about Pokemon didn't you yeah yeah we could talk about Pokemon for days we will someday uh you see old Ozymandias which is Jeremy Irons he was Alfred once, so I assume you know who he is. Yes. And that's the only reason why? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, this is HBO, so I assume you're just in no matter what. I'm in 100%. I like that they've been doing some new shows recently, like the Chernobyl show we have to get into. I haven't watched Started it Started on Monday. I have to watch it. It's getting really good reviews so far. Yeah. Obviously curious to see how this one's going to pan out. It, it looks fine from the trailer. Not much more. I get it. I'm a fan later. of the universe. This is coming along with that uh, Kenny Powers slash John Goodman slash what's the other guy like uh, the mega church where they're ripping people off for money. Joel this fa- Yeah. Well, this is like a, ro- a fake version of that. Okay. Basically, fall on HBO is going to be insane. Like they're just introducing a shitload of new shows. So Mark's been asking me like what we're going to do our next reviews on after we do Game of Thrones and that's what we've been talking about. Danny McBride isn't in that show though, right? Danny McBride is in that show. Is he? Yes. Okay. John's a big Danny McBride fan. Love him. You love the Eastbound and Down. All right. More trailers. Uh the spoiler <laughs> ban has been lifted by the Almighty Russo brothers. Uh mm-hmm. John, I don't care that you haven't seen Endgame yet. We're just gonna spoil it for you. What's Endgame? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh uh, it's funny we'll come back. Tom Holland is out here hawking more mm-hmm. Spider Man trailers and um, the important part here is that we're claiming now that there's a multiverse in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is like they're going to bring in the X-Men and, and all this other shit now? Or, or you're going to be blown away by this, John. Go ahead. So before who died, dude? before Disney acquired Everyone. Fox, Everyone died. X-Men, okay. used, they weren't able to be in the same universe as like Captain America. Yep. And now okay. that's possible. Except sometimes they just were. Like That's Spider-Man true. technically wasn't allowed, but some somehow he just was. Yeah. So Spider-Man was Sony, X-Men was Fox, and then Marvel was Disney. So it's a merger now. You well, saying, it was exactly. an acquisition. Sony's still okay. out there on their own. So okay. now they can all be in the same movies, which Not is a big Spider-Man. deal. Maybe I'll go watch it then if it comes out. And also technically not the Hulk because Universal still owns the Hulk, but he's still there. It's weird. You don't need to know that. But what did you think of... We got more of Quentin, a.k.a. Mysterio, a.k.a. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. You know Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah, right, John? Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's the one. Jake Gyllenhaal. Exactly what you're talking about. Shout out uh, Key and Peele. And he's the one that gives away the whole... Mul- well, he doesn't give it away, but the guy, says, the guy comes out of the shadows. He's like, he's from a multiverse or... It was Nick Fury. Was it Nick yeah, Fury? That, okay. that guy. That guy. The guy with the eye patch. I don't know. Whatever. Not important anymore. He should have just stayed dead. <laughs> Dude, I hope they never make another fucking DC movie. No spoilers. Shut up. Uh, I guess everybody knows Pete is Spider-Man now because Zendaya just says like, oh, you're you're Spider-Man. Wow. You call him Pete like he's your best friend. Like, you know. You know forever. exactly who I'm talking about. I know. But you don't hear many people call him Pete. I'm sorry that I'm trying to <laughs> just you know my friend move Pete this Parker. along. <laughs> okay. It's actually just one person that knows he's Spider-Man besides... Aunt May. Okay. Nick yeah, Fury. You have that. Happy well, Hogan. It's Nick Fury, man. Nick Fury knows everything, right? I was trying to take a picture of you. Dude, he's not going to sit still. He doesn't, I got one, but... He doesn't do that. Oh, and his best friend knows he's Spider-Man, too. Okay, yeah. A lot yeah, of so know. Ned knows. Uh, John, did you get your fill of old naked ladies with the new It Chapter 2 trailer? You can never get enough of old naked ladies, right? So I mean, I've never said that, but wasn't that a band too? Well, bare naked ladies, bare naked ladies. That's okay. close. So the way <laughs> if I they would have added old, you would have been on old, something. Old bare naked so ladies. there's only there's only ones and zeros in this world, and most of those old naked ladies were ones. So yeah, that was pretty good. You're scaring me. <laughs> there's I, ones and zeros. That's you, how it works. That's did you actually watch this trailer though? I watched half of it. I think. <laughs> I was. I mean, then you got the point. It's yeah. creepy. There's an old lady involved. Yes. To back him up. The first half was the best half. 
actually yes. yeah, by the, far the best half of the trailer. The second half is mostly just like, uh, zoom in. The, the second half just shows who else is in the movie. Which is cool. Like you see James McAvoy. You see Bill Hader. Yeah. When we were probably in like, I don't know what grade we were in, but when you're like a 10-year-old boy, you have sleepovers and it's okay. It's acceptable. So Mark was sleeping over. And there were probably a couple other guys sleeping over. It sounds weird. I'm making it sound weird. It's not. No, so, you're making it sound weird because you're like, oh, no, it wasn't weird. So, dude, stop doing that with your voice. That's why it sounded weird. <laughs> my bad. So my mom didn't understand the they whole, like, come over. my brother's seventh birthday, we all went and saw Freddie Got Fingered. And my mom thought it was okay. So she thought finger. it was about getting, like, pop like you're going to jail no mom freddie got fingered it was different but so she was okay with us i think it was it and it was one other scary movie and i don't remember which one it was but we all sat there and we're like let's watch it and we're like 10 year old kids we obviously didn't sleep that night but it's like six hours long you guys sat through that i don't think we saw the whole thing i think we were just scared we probably turned it off yeah. and just sat up the rest of the night the only scene i needed from that to terrify me was uh it's 420 by the way yeah, great uh the only scene that i needed for that was when he pops out of you know like in a bathroom like where there's a tile, tile floor and there's a drain in the middle yes. yeah when he slowly squeezes his way out of that oh yeah yeah that's all i needed when all the blood starts coming out of the faucet and stuff. that too yeah yeah that's creepy i mean notorious the sewer scene is i i still think the original one is more creepy than the the new, I don't know, the dude. New one. The new version was just like Jesus, but the old one is just like holy fuck. That's crazy. I mean, he literally bites his arm off. Yeah, no spoilers. John hasn't seen it. <laughs> He's still uh, scarred. All right, Mark. I have devastating news for you. Dora the Explorer has been pushed back a full week. Uh, you're gonna have to wait yeah. another week to see the <laughs> Tomb Raider movie that you really wanted. Damn. It, Are you it gonna be okay? literally is Tomb Raider, but with a child that looks like she's. 28 right so we talked about that kind of is she an adult or not no john you seen this trailer no <laughs> so if she's like an adult and she's still talking to her backpack is that an issue yeah i'm just waiting to Sounds see like for health swiper no swiping yeah okay dude what do you want remy he's just gonna be in your face the entire time you never should have paid any attention to him uh universal is planning a female fronted fast and furious spinoff awesome some good alliteration there, considering how many beers I've had. Starring Charlize Theron's character, Ooh, Theron. Cypher, from not the latest one, but the one before that? I can't keep any straight anymore. It was It was two Fast and Furiouses ago. <laughs> That's how I'm going to start measuring like my career progression. It's like, well, I got my master's degree around yeah. Fast and Furious 6. Yeah. My life really started to take off around, yeah, 6 or 7. No, life got good around Fast 2. Yeah. Too fast, too furious. Tyrese is here. Let's fucking go. Tokyo Drift. That's fair. The, Tokyo Drift was tight. What was... Oh, that was Need for Speed. But it, wasn't it based off of um, Fast and Furious? Need no, for dude, Speed they had a video PS2. game. That was the greatest game. Oh, but that game. game was sick. Yes. It was Jesse Pinkman. But wasn't it just when Tokyo Drift released? I mean, it was probably around the same, like, three-year <laughs> span. But no, it wasn't the same... I well, I thought that's the reason because it was why after they, Breaking Bad got really big, and that's how Jesse Pinkman, Aaron Paul, I don't know why I was yeah, Aaron Paul got the big role because he was like, oh, he's good in Breaking Bad, and now he can do yeah, and he sucked. Even though everyone is so always fast. going to look at him and say that's Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, no, I just know it came out around one or two, so I figured they made that franchise because Fast and Furious was so popular at the time. Okay, but my question is, do you give a shit about Charlize Theron's character? Is it going to be like that? Well, her last movie was actually pretty good, Atomic Blonde. I feel like that was forever ago. Was that her last movie, though? Like mm, her big movie? That's a great question. I don't know. I also don't know. <laughs> Do you know who Charlize Theron is? Yes, because okay. I know Atomic Blonde. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm so assuming you, she was the blonde in that movie? She's basically just like a hacker lady in this, and she has dreadlocks, which is weird. Yeah, so she can obviously play this type of action, cool... She well, won an Oscar. Like, she's a great actress. I have no problem with this. It's just that character means nothing to me. So, I guess this is just them trying to get out there, like, with a, an all female. I'm starting to really. Uh, she didn't have dreads. They were more like braids, but that okay, was her character whatever. in this, right? Yes. I, I'm just trying to picture her right and now. And she okay. bribed Vin Diesel. Was that the Fast and Furious where they're 
They were in. They're in the cars on the. They were in Cuba, the lake or, or the ocean that was frozen Dude, over. I can't fucking. Keep and then the submarine through. just shot up, and, and then the rock like floated the out of existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was okay. the one. Uh, uh, they're okay. the greatest movies. Let's just move on. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> Netflix has signed a first look deal with Dark Horse Comics, so they're going to bring us more nonsensical bullshit along the lines of Umbrella Academy. What was the one with Mads Mikkelsen that we just watched? It was a movie. Polar. Polar. Right? Yeah. It was kind of like a John Wick knockoff. And they're Hellboy too, right? They are Hellboy. Okay. I don't think that Netflix would get the rights to that because that technically belongs to a studio right now. Yeah. So a first look deal, John, is basically uh, they put a script out there and before they get an opportunity to sell it to anybody else, any other studio, Netflix gets the right of refusal. So if they like it, nobody else can have it. They have to pass on it before somebody else can make it. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Mark, do you know any Dark Horse comics? Is there something you would want to see? I actually know more of the ones they bought in the they bought the rights to. So Dark Horse Comics is a publisher of comic books like Marvel okay. or DC. Yep. They're smaller. They bought the rights to uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, so they actually make comics about Sick, that show. By the way, he loves that show. That's yeah. why I brought it up. They've done a bunch of. They did like. They bought rights to Terminator. They've done a bunch of alien, alien Prometheus, but none of that, like that's not going, they're not going to be able to make a TV show about that because a movie studio technically owns the film rights for that. Yeah. It would have to be something like the goon or Mm -hmm. Nexus or Usagi Yojimbo, Ninja rabbit. Yeah. The Ninja bunny. That would actually be a good TV show if it was like animated. It's for sure. It's a Ronin movie, Mm -hmm. except it's, animals instead of people that'd be cool if it was like an fx movie or or an fx show the mask the mask is dark horse so they could actually make that'd be perfect so the jim carrey movies everybody knows them but most of them don't really know the comics the comics were way darker than the movies the comics were before the movie there was like murder and violence and sex and shit and then jim carrey comes along and then uh, jamie kennedy comes along and does a sequel (laughs) Which was absolutely terrible. Absolute garbage. But, I mean, that I, I'd want to see that. And Hellboy would be great. Look up. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I wish anybody else I could see this right now. You. My dog is sticking his face through the bars on my stairs. Uh, but anyways, I would really like to see Hellboy into a TV show, but it's just not going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. the rights are not going to be sold, even though the last one bombed and I thought it was pretty good. But whatever. Yeah, and the animation for Hellboy in the comic books is honestly some of the coolest um illustrations it's It's, really weird extremely distinctive so but i would like to see an animated show with 100 percent. that's the only way you can do it they failed too many times on the big screen just if you're not going to have guillermo del toro come back just make it a tv show and make it on netflix yeah mark this is where i'm going to let you just go wild michael rooker aka Yandu Udanta, a.k.a. Racist Merle from The Walking Dead. Uh, he's in talks to play King Shark in Suicide Squad. Oh, shit. Kind of makes sense because he has a pretty good relationship with James Gunn. Yeah, now I'm just curious as to how they're going to do that with CGI. If it's Obviously, they're going to make it so you kind of recognize his face, but putting his face on the character will still look kind of weird unless he's in a brunch. This has just got to be a voice thing, right? I would think so. You, can't, they- make, you can't put a, a human face on a shark and... I, this not, is not street sharks, Mark. I'm not talking about like a little ass tiny face on a big shark. I'm talking like they are. would obviously make it look like a shark and stretch it out, but he would still have his like eyes and features of his face where you kind of you can still kind of recognize him as Michael Michael Rooker. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it'll just be his voice and that's it. And he does have a very distinctive voice. All right. Right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll just go fuck You're myself. usually wrong, so I'm just going to say that you're wrong. All right. I mean, he does have a very unique voice, so I'm happy with the casting for this role. Dude, what are you doing back there? Big ass paws. You can just hear his paws just dragging. Dude, up he can't him. help it. He's just big and goofy. You know how they he's say super that? Tall. Yeah, he's going to fill out. Yeah. Well, he better because right now he's a little wiener and he gets pushed around by other dogs. So I, That's a good side one. note, I had I took him to like a doggy daycare the other day yeah. because they wanted to quote unquote evaluate him. Don't go to a place that does that. They told me that they were accepting him on a probationary basis. Don't like, take him back. You put my dog on probation. What did he do? Nothing. Like they accused him of just being a puppy, which he is because oh. he's five months old. Yeah. I don't know, man. Kind of weird. I got lucky with my dog. I have a giant schnauzer. And I got lucky when I was living in LaSalle, Peru. There was a the family that owned the local pet shop. 
they had giant schnauzers from the same breeder. Somehow it worked out. And when I moved back to Skokie, Chicagoland area, they and I did the same thing. And they sent me an email about a probational, like, bring him in for two days. And we're going to, I was like, I'm not bringing him there. Yeah, I don't know. No chance. I don't know what to do with him, but I can't leave him at home because he shits on the floor still. Uh, anyways. Put him in crate, let him shit in there. Yeah, well, I don't want him shitting anywhere inside the house. I want him to shit outside. It's okay. He's a little poopy bear. Yeah. That's what puppies do. They shit everywhere. He's just a giant goober. I don't know why I even gave him a name. I don't call him by his name. I just call him Goober. That's my dog's big boy and his name's Dasher, so it makes no sense. All right. Best. 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 We the best. Worst. 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 The worst. worst. She's the worst person in the world. Huge skank. Terrible. But thank you. Darian, I'm not going to stick up for my dog because my dog is a giant goober. Stick up for your dog, Ryan. <laughs> I love my dog more than I love any human. Uh, don't tell my wife. John, you have a best man alive for us. Let's go. Yes, I do. So, <laughs> I'm a big Instagram guy, so I'm always, I'm a big meme guy. So, I love the whole Florida man, you know, memes, all of them. So, when Mark told me I had to pick the, you know, the best man alive or whatever for the week... I immediately, I was like, I'm going to find a Florida man. He had to do something crazy today or yesterday. And I think people are insane. I think it was, I think it was literally today or yesterday. Can I, before you get into your story, Yep. can I explain to you why Florida man is a thing? Sure. Are you familiar with the sunshine laws? I mean, no, I don't know what, I mean, they're obviously the laws of Florida. So sunshine state. Well, it's more specifically constraining the media in Florida. So if you do something really insane, crazy in another state, generally it doesn't get released to the media. They okay. have to tell the media. In Florida, though, they tell you fucking everything. So let and me we just love say, that. We love that. Yes, we do. But every other state is just as crazy as Florida. But it's not you just released. Don't hear about it. Well, that's like, fine. Ohio so, man is not a thing. Nah, for, well, Florida's I'm, fucking crazy. Ohio's probably got some weird shit going on too. It does, but. But if that was the case, Wisconsin would have the most. That's because fair. Because that's where all the serial killers are. Yes. Agreed. I'm sorry. Go ahead with your No. Story. So, yes. If you threw them all in, then it'd just water it down and it wouldn't be cool. So, right now, Florida man's in. Sure. So, <laughs> the headliner is Florida man says he would rather go to jail than to his wife as he gets caught driving on sunroof. All right. So, it's this 70-year-old guy, Leonard Olson. Okay. And he's driving a nice-ass car. It's like a 300 series. I don't know. It looks nice. He was going 100 miles an hour. All right. And then when they caught him, he was going 40 miles an hour and was on the sunroof driving. So well, like standing up? Standing up. So I want to find, I want to okay. find the quote because he, he's quoted saying it was, hold on. Um, let's see. Hold on. This is, hold on. <laughs> Olson told police that his wife, Treats me like a servant and she's the mistress. He's tired of this shit. The man added that he would rather go to jail than go back home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the car drives, there's another quote. The car drives itself and has a gigantic computer in it. Was, was it so a, it's Tesla? a Tesla? Yeah, it sounds like sure a, Tesla. a Tesla. Is this a Tesla? Hold on. So I'm going to show you it and you tell me. It's an SUV though. Yeah. No, it, no, it's not an SUV. I, I thought it was like a Chrysler 300. So hold on. It definitely sounds like a Tesla. It does sound like a Tesla. It does not look like a Tesla. It looks like a Chrysler. Uh, no, that's like a. Th- no, that's an S. That's a Cadillac. Or it's a Cadillac. Yeah, Cadillac. that's a, yes, okay. it's a Cadillac. One of those nice Cadillacs. Yep, it's a nice Cadillac. An nice white. He was flexing out there. So, so he was going a hundred. So hold on. His second quote was drives itself. I thought it would be a nice way to praise God for a minute, and I thought it would be nice at the time, and that's what I did. So this guy literally hates his wife so much that he'd rather go to jail. And I think that just sums up a lot of people. You know, so, I just, I don't understand. Like, just get a divorce. You I, just got married though, Ryan. Yeah, right? yeah, you just got married. This guy's 70. <laughs> and there's I don't, no, no, there's no going back. He'd rather go to jail than go back. Let him go to jail and get his three meals a day. All right. He's driving a nice car. <laughs> three yes. meals. So we can just assume that he's got a little bit of money. Right. He can find a gold digger. That's fair. That's fair. I think he, maybe he just wanted to get in better shape, so he's going to head to jail for a little bit. You know what? That's how many time. I, that's the way that you have the most time to go to the gym. Exactly. Mark, if you ever feel like you're falling behind in your workouts, just get arrested, go to prison. Okay. You wouldn't make it a week. No, I would do. I would do like the prison workout um, diet. 
where they just like take a fucking plastic bag and just put like Doritos and breadsticks and mar- Marsala sauce and just mix it up. And what the hell are you yeah, talking about? What are you about? talking about? You know what the Dude, best part is, though? There's a whole documentary on it. You know what the best part diets. of all this is? Is one, I, I can't get over when he just said he's tired of this shit. And then he's facing charges of reckless driving a misdemeanor. Like, my man's has to go home tomorrow. And he's going to be pissed <laughs> Ooh, off yeah, again. Yeah, he couldn't even... They like, purposely did like, Fuck that. He might shank somebody in jail. Just he so should he have brought, have like, an home. airsoft gun and robbed a gas so, station. Exactly. I agree with Damn, that. This guy fucked up. But he's still... I mean, he still gets it, though. So... Damn. Okay. I want to interject with, like... I don't know what to call this. I don't know if you guys heard this story. That's an India submarine. This is an Indian submarine. And what? they've been covering this up for the last, I think, about 14 months. They've been covering it up. But it just came out that it sunk and had to be basically completely replaced because they went to dive and somebody didn't close the hatch on the top. No. <laughs> <laughs> that guy <laughs> fucked up. And then basic <laughs> physics, the water forced the submarine farther and $3 farther billion down dollars. into it was the $3 ocean. Billion it is a $2.9 billion Indian submarine. Uh, it is called the INS Arahant. And somebody forgot to close the hatch before they took a dive. Oh, boy. So not only did it sink... But they had to pull it out, and now they have to replace Damn. all of the piping on the inside because it's not supposed to get seawater, salt water on it because right. it'll corrode. So somebody probably got the death penalty for this. Somebody fucked up. If we're in India. It's real hard. Right? I don't know. They don't I, exist anymore. Yeah. I saw this story, <laughs> and I, I just had to, had to talk about it. But Mark, go ahead with your best man life. My, mine's pretty, pretty quick. This guy from Taiwan, he accidentally swallowed an AirPod. But the whole oh, was this guy that pooped it out and it still yeah, worked? Yeah, it, oh he pooped God. it out. The AirPods still had 43% battery, and that was the whole takeaway of the story is like AirPods can last through your di- digestive tract and keep the battery life. When, so shout out to this guy for actually like proving science and how good the product is. And that's what you take away from this. <laughs> pretty much. Just advanced technology. You could probably live to be a couple hundred years. To be old. honest, though. Every person I know that has AirPods are like, this is the greatest Apple product I've ever had in my life. Like, it actually works the way Smithers. I was hoping it did. Ask me if I have AirPods. I'm guessing you have AirPods. I don't. I Damn. thought, no, yeah, I don't. Damn, is God. that too recent for you? I use Bose and they, I don't even have AirPods better. and I'm bougie yeah. as fuck. I have zero interest in AirPods. But also, you're never going to use that AirPod again because well, it went through somebody's digestive system. You can system. throw it through the wash because apparently it can survive anything. So Yeah, I, there's no amount of washing that can be done to an AirPod that would make me want to stick that in my ear again. That's fair. Yeah, so supposedly this guy in Taiwan was sleeping and he was maybe listening to his favorite podcast, the Chumpcast, and it fell off. And I'm just like picturing it like just resting close to his mouth on his pillow and him just snoring where it's like where he's snoring and it's slowly like like coming closer and closer to his mouth and then just he just swallowed it. The best part is there's an x ray that shows it. It's hilarious, right? Yeah. That's how they found it. Did you guys see? There was a vine. I think you they probably heard it though, because if the, you sorry, had to have the AirPods it beeping, it, unless they are, I believe, like ten feet apart, they'll stop working. But he probably was looking for it, maybe right when he woke up, and then just turned it on and just heard from his stomach, just like that's but that would that be terrifying. That change, just like Travis Scott or something. His, no, his like, latest little little sky song, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it was sky definitely song. little sky. <laughs> yeah, uh, did you guys see? I think it was posted on Barstool not that long ago. It was on their Instagram account, but it was like it was high, obviously high school lunch. Yeah, one kid walks up behind another kid, takes out one of his AirPods, puts it in his mouth, and I takes a big that. old gulp of yeah. water and just swallows it. So is he going to give him back his AirPod? Now, I don't know if or? that was real or not. I watched it like a hundred times trying to figure it out. I couldn't tell. You cared about that so much more than I was I mad. No, I, <laughs> I was just mad. assumed that it was. He just kept reversing. I mean, I would have been enough. pissed. Don't also, get me wrong. Jill, I have done zero power hours, but I'm drinking Bud Lights What's at a, a power a hour quicker rate than a normal power hour. Also, Mark didn't know what a power hour was. Worst man alive. I got so, go to go to the bathroom. So Bye. there's zero. We're going to talk yeah. shit about you for yep. about 10 minutes. So just take your time. Yep. How do you not know what a power hour is? Uh, apparently, Mark never went to college. Uh, I, I don't know. So I'll tell a story. So please. So I've been giving Mark shit for like a a long time about, I was like, when am I going to go on the chump cast? And it started with like, I just want to be in the background, do a power hour while you guys are recording. Cause I'm not like, I don't watch movies like that. And Mark's like, Oh yeah, you could come on one, blah, blah, blah. I kept saying it. Finally, Smithers wedding. Congratulations, by Thank the you. way. Uh, we run into each other at Federale's that night 
And Mark's like, oh, you should do the, you know, we're doing one next week, blah, blah, blah. Go see the Pikachu movie. You could do it. So I'm texting him and I'm like, can I do a power hour while we're doing the podcast or we'll fuck with the sound? Like, obviously, there's going to be music in the background. I didn't say that part because everybody knows what a power hour is, right? Well, or you would think. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, he texts me back. He's like, "I yes, you could drink during it. I'm like, I don't think you understand the question. He doesn't. So then today, he didn't understand it. So then today, uh, when we're driving over here, I'm like, so you didn't understand my question. He's like, you can drink as much as you want while we're doing the podcast. I was like, I asked if I could do a power hour. He's like, you can drink as much as you want. I go, do you know what a power hour is? He had no idea. You know, on this podcast, we allow Mark a certain amount of leeway to kind of catch up to uh, normal, what I would call standard interaction. Right. Right. With with another human being that's close to your age. And uh, he still lacks quite a bit he doesn't get it so i was like there's this app my tube 60 me and my buddies make power hours sure. all the time okay and then he's like so what do you do you just listen to music and you take and you drink beer and i was like it's no well if you want to put it that simply yeah every minute the song changes and you take a shot of beer he's like is that you do it every 10 seconds i was like no because you would throw up or die so you don't do it every 10 seconds it's no, every you, minute you literally just took it up to your veins and you take it like an IV. It's you just fu- keep, it's fine. Just yeah. keep putting the beer into it. Yes. But he's just not that smart. So we get it. We're talking about you, Mark. It's fine. Oh, Mark's back. All right. My actual Mark's best man alive. Power hour. You guys know what a power hour is? No, never heard of it. He grabbed the shot glass just to prove that he knows what a power hour How is. How did you even know where my shot glasses were in this house? And first off, you just grabbed one for yourself. Not only are you dumb, you're selfish. And you're not even talking to the microphone. So uh, my good. best man alive. I got one hour in already. No, you don't. Please. You don't know how to drink beer. Like it's okay. You took one shot. Congratulations, dude. Uh, my best man alive is a guy named Jason Stiber. You probably don't know the name, but you know the story. He already sounds cool. This wow. guy got pulled over a couple years ago. Now the police said this, there's a specific police officer that said he pulled him over because he was driving while distracted, AKA looking at his cell phone because he saw his mouth moving and he was holding something square in front of his face. Justin Stiber contends that it was a McDonald's hash brown. Hell yeah. Love hash This went to court Ooh, for so three years. My favorite. Justin St- Jason Stiber, Jason Stiber, hired attorneys, paid God knows how much. What was in, the in ticket? Like $45? It was $300. So, so stop real quick. So his defense was it was a hash brown the, and they were trying to it was sue him or whatever phone. saying it wasn't a hash brown? The cop said it was his phone okay he was like texting while driving or not paying attention to driving he contends it was a hash brown from mcdonald's and if you i mean everybody knows what those look like right they're square yeah oh i know exactly what they look like yeah you finish the story but i can easily prove if he's innocent or guilty looks like an iphone 3 you don't have to okay you don't have to because he did okay because he went through and pulled his cell phone records he had freedom of information act FOIA requests why would it take three years because that's how stuff works. I'm glad he system. won, though. Did he yeah. have the little tissue that goes up halfway on the, the hash paper? Brown? Yeah, I don't know. That would prove it right there. Because right. unless you're a fucking psychopath murderer and take off that thing when you're eating it, then once in a while, all greasy. Once yeah. in a while, though, you so accidentally you, eat a little bit of it. Yeah, if you were you know, legitimately you eating a hash brown from McDonald's, you would have that paper. And by the way, you don't just like you forget about it. You just like throw it down. It would have been in his car. Think so. I think so. If okay. you're telling the truth. But well, the ahead. FOIA request pulled out information that said that this cop was on the 15th hour of a 16 hour double shift. So it was kind of like, oh, maybe his judgment's impaired. And he had phone records that said, like, I was not on my phone during this. Yeah. He had a car where he had a Bluetooth enabled system. Yeah, where that, he, Yeah, that proves it right there. Right. Yeah. So the point is, though, and I have to apologize to one of our listeners, Cop Mike. Mike, you're my friend. I love you. But you're I also. Cop. Love it when a, an innocent citizen sticks it to the man. And Mike, you are the man and I will fight you. <laughs> but this guy won. He fought the law and he won. And it was worth it because those hash browns are It was. Fire. Well, th- I mean, he, got out of he lost his initial he court case, but he took it to a, the, the appellate court and Good he stuck it out. Court. Probably spent thousands of Niles dollars West. on attorney okay. fees and court fees and all this other shit. But he eventually won, was proven innocent. Now his insurance rates won't go up. Damn. And he probably is five grand in the hole. 
But uh, worth Je- it. Jason Cyber, you are my best man alive. For that me. guy's very cool. Is a McDonald's hash brown a top three fast food breakfast item? No. Why? Hotcakes from where? McDonald's. McDonald's? We're talking McDonald's, but like, false. Okay, okay, you're talking about their pancakes. Their pancakes. They're yeah, hotcakes. They call them hotcakes. I don't think that they can legally call them pancakes. Okay. Yeah, those <laughs> for, are fire. Those are for fire. some reason that I don't want to. You know ever the have the to? breakfast sandwich from Chick Fil A though? The the chicken oh, with dude. the biscuit. Dude, it's fire. Yeah. Now I'm hungry. But I still take the hash browns. Number one for me. I love hash browns. Mm, yeah. You know, for me, it's McGri- uh, hotcakes, McGriddle. And the breakfast burritos. Mc, McGriddles are so... You ever have Dunkin' Donuts, the little hash brown bites? Yeah, those are pretty good, too. They're not bad. They're pretty good. But they give you, like, four for two bucks, and I fucking hate it. I thought you were going to say they give you, like, massive diarrhea, yeah. which is also true. Everything gives me massive stop diarrhea. Dunkin' Donuts. They used to have this, the... Um, what are they? The to-go wraps, or the to-go... I don't know which... Oh, like... Little, yeah, the little... They're, like, little uh, flour... I think they're called donuts. No, they have like that's eggs that's what normal people it. get there. Yeah, to go wraps or whatever, but they raise it to like two bucks. Anyways, whatever. Dude, yeah, I'm actually overpriced. pissed at you for bringing down a shot glass and putting it on top of my cooler. So now I have to move the shot glass when I want another. Beer. And by the way, he took one shot out of it. That was his power hour. Dude, I did a power. I did a, actually. Uh, you did one sixtieth, dude. And I'm an idiot. I said I'm good for the hour. I meant I'm good for the minute. You're. A so dumb. I should have another one. What song was playing though? Huh. Right, you don't even know how power hours work. Songs You're up here, dog. I got songs up here. Right, dog. So we're gonna move on now. You're so dumb. To our movie <laughs> review for the week, which is Detective Pikachu. Uh, so we're at sixty three percent currently on Rotten Tomatoes, eighty six percent percent from fans. Yes, puts it almost on the cusp of a popcorn flick. I would call it a popcorn flick, but I would say mostly this is aimed at children. I think we could have a pretty long discussion on who this movie is actually for. It's for Kelly, my wife. Shout out Kelly. Specifically for it's your wife. Literally for she was like, this might be top three movies in the last ten years. I'm like, okay. It might be. Well, let's get to that discussion. In a Shout few. out TJ DJ. What's uh, good though? Uh, so this movie was directed by Rob Letterman, whose credits include Monsters vs. Aliens in uh two thousand nine and also the twenty fifteen version of Goosebumps with Jack Black. He's pretty much a no name, right? I never yeah. watched that movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm not interested. Uh, budget of 150 million dollars, projecting for 70 million opening weekend. Mark, you're trying to tell me this is going to beat Endgame? Yes, for this weekend. Right, but it's Saturday afternoon right now, so you don't know that it will, and I will text you tomorrow when it does. Look, I'm not telling you that it can't, but you were like, no, 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 it already beat Endgame. It, well, it, it's ahead of Endgame this week. It already beat Endgame, office. and I'm already fucking it's two gonna, power hours in. It's going to beat Endgame, <laughs> dude. <laughs> He's one one twentieth. <laughs> so this is um, projecting for $70 million domestically. It's going to kill overseas. It's going to be totally fine. They've already greenlit a sequel for this movie, which tells you everything you need to know. They greenlit it months ago before this even came out. They knew the, what they had on their hands. So a little backstory on the movie. Tim Goodman, played by Justice Smith, lives in a world with fucking Pokemon, and he decided he wants to be a goddamn insurance adjuster. Yeah. Like an idiot. Loser. Sky's the limit if you live in a world with Pokemon. You could do whatever you want, and you're going to be an insurance adjuster. Guys, a loser. Come on. Remy's going nuts right now. Uh, but he gets fucked up by a Cubone in the opening scene, which is kind of funny. It was very funny. Uh, then he gets a phone call from... Rhyme City, a uh, detective in Rhyme City, says, uh, hey, your dad's dead. Sorry. Uh, so he has to go clean out his apartment, and he ends up there and meets Detective Pikachu, and they unravel this mystery of Tim's daddy. Mark. Yes. How jacked were the Pokemon, and how many people did they kill? You thought Mewtwo killed a couple people, but surprise, surprise, there was a twist at the end, and he didn't. Uh, Jack Pokemon, you have... Machamp, he's jacked he's as, as fuck. Jacked. He was up he, super jacked. The, the, directing dude, the traffic. perfect, the perfect role for Machamp is to direct traffic because he's like hilarious. How funny was that? While pointing around the Snorlax, he's like, "Yo, this bicep, go that way." That was hilarious. Snorlax it was, very was good. just knocked, taking up a lane. There was also a Generation Two Pokemon that looked like my dog Moose. He's pink. He's like a bold, half bulldog, half bear frog guy um sure, okay john, so let's maybe john we should talk what about is his name our you know who i'm talking about yes i do i know exactly who you're talking about i don't know his name because i kind of fell off after generation one 
So did, every, probably, so did everybody. We else. get Charizard. Charizard obviously is Jack Otron. Charizard is one of the biggest Pokemon besides Gyarados. We also get Gyarados. And he, I would say, besides, on, I could go on Onyx. You could go on for 151 Pokemon. 151 Pokemon, yes. But beyond that, you're kind of fucked, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was a bit lost with this because <laughs> Granbull. His name is Granbull. He literally looks like a pit bull. Grand bull. Okay. Yeah. No, I walked out of the movie and thinking like, oh, they probably only had rights to about 20 Pokemon or so. No. But no, they had they had about 50 Pokemon in this movie. It was just half of them were from generations that our generation is not familiar with. Right. I There's seven generations. Are there? Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, so how many total? Po- it's got to be over a thousand. Oh, for sure. I don't know. Maybe fifteen hundred. So it's a lot. Okay. Two married guys in Rashid. chilling. At this point, who who was this movie Flexing. made for? Because how old were you guys when the first Pokemon games came out? Red and blue. I'm not talking about gold or eight. No. Yeah. I eight mean, or nine. I mean, you thinking back to the. Oh man. The I second game I ever had. For my Game Boy Color was Pokemon. I had Pokemon Red. I still had, you had a it. Game Boy Color. You didn't have the regular. I had the yellow Game Boy. I didn't. First. I, I uh, my brother had one of those. Well, must be nice to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> was yours like the see through, so you could see all the electric stuff? It's and you thought you were rich. purple. Yeah, you thought. I will pull it out and I will put batteries in wow. it. I will play. I got that. I have that at home right now. I will duel you. Yep. I still have the con- the connector cable. I have it as well. Well, so, yeah, we it sounds like we know old. exactly what we're fucking doing tonight. Then looks like I'm not going anywhere. My Zapdos is about to fuck Let's you up. Fight. Hold on, my Zapdos is gonna fuck you up. John, technically, when we collected all these Pokemon cards, we never actually battled. We I only told, collected. I, I know. That's what I was saying when we were talking about Yu Gi Oh. I don't think we ever. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. You guys didn't want to end your friendship. Yu Gi Oh, we did. Yu Gi Oh, we battled. I probably beat your ass. John and I ended our friendship probably. 13 times throughout our Yu-Gi-Oh careers. Yeah. I'm, I'm picturing you guys, you know, like the, the old Indian guy meme where he's like friendship ended with, yes, et cetera. New friendship started with, and then it's like a picture of him high-fiving this dude. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm picturing for you guys. But in high school, that's exactly how it went. Okay. That's that. On- Mark still is thinking about that home run he hit in eighth grade. It was a 200 foot yeah, fence. Yeah, that's where the girl, that, the girls, that high fastball. Off the and- girls played on that field. Just FYI. So you hit it as far as they do. All right, Red Pokemon Game Boy game came out 98. Actually, it came out two and a half years earlier in 1996 in February. So we're probably in, talking when we were like in China in, or in Japan. In okay, like, but we're probably thinking like 99, 2000 when we were like 9, 10. Yeah. It's probably when we were playing. Yeah. So the only reason I knew that this was coming out is because I was a huge Nintendo power addict. And they were just like hyping this over the moon. Like this is the RPG that's going to change everything because it already came out in Japan. And that was the point where I was like, I'm going to sell my Sega Genesis and get a fucking Game Boy Color, you know, and do this. I thought you said Game Boy Color for a second. No, I, I did not say Game Boy Color. I, I, think I don't did. think that's worth quite as much. You Open did. your ears, Mark. <laughs> Hold on. Did you have the Nintendo Advance? Game no, Boy Advance. Game no, Boy I did Advance. not. You did it. That was like the two hand. Yeah, it was, right? it was still a little guy. Um, it was like a small Sega. Uh, what was the hand here? Game Gear. There you go. From but Surf Ninjas. I think that was the actual first handheld game where you could hook up because we had the Yu-Gi-Oh games. Do you remember that little wire you would hook up to two of them and battle? That was the first handheld game where you can actually battle on. But anyways, go on. Wow. The story within the story happening right now is John chugging a beer because TJ asked him to. Um, John just drank 10 Mark, years, talk to me way. about the murder that happened in this. Is there any murder to speak of between the Pokemon? Because I'm pretty sure that if this was a real world, Pokemon would rule it and we would all be dead. It'd be too easy. It'd be, it'd be like it, dinosaurs. It'd be too easy. Right? Yes. Agreed. Like, Pterodactyls would come pick you up and drop you and you'd be dead. There'd be, there's no, no humans had a chance. No. Go ahead though, Mark. I, I said this already. I said you too. There was a twist at the end. Obviously, there's not going to be killing in this because what? It's PG. Is it PG-13? I think it's, no, it's, it's PG. PG. It's not even PG-13. So when Pikachu's talking about sticking fingers in him, did, there did, you, catch adult, did you catch that? Did you catch that? There were some adult references. He for said, sure. everybody's normally, Pika Pika, stick a finger in me. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's this cute ass fingers, though. He's yeah, like, no, that's still weird, though. But this is the Pixar model where you make a movie for kids and you throw in adult jokes that can be contrived as innuendo the mr mime scene yes of course where the my 
He lights him on fire, basically. Hilarious. It was hilarious. And do you think kids got that? The finger part or the lighting him on fire? The lighting him on fire. Yeah, because the they're, part's they're with not. their parents. Yes. Wow. That's fucked up. Right. That, so, was, that was our day and age, though. I watched a whole compilation of all the things from like Rugrats and Hey Arnold that are like super adult reference like Tommy Pickle's grandpa, Tommy like grabbed one of his VHSs and he's like, oh no, Tommy, you can't watch this. It's my favorite video and it's like space sex dolls or some shit. I swear. Right. Jesus. But people, yeah. So, well, that's like the whole but yeah, thing. Yeah. You have wanted- to have the adult references. Um, I mean, Rocco but- from Rocco's Modern Life was a sex line worker. What was um Johnny? What, <laughs> what was true. his name? Johnny What's Bravo? Johnny Bravo? Johnny Bravo was... His oh, best was, friend was a teenager, and he was trying to fuck all the time. Huge perv. That's that true. makes no sense. That's and he lived true. with his parents. That made no sense. He was trying to have sex with underage girls. Yeah. That's what Johnny mm-hmm. Bravo was trying to do. I Man, guess. You can't make those, key, those cartoons anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> we did have some, okay. like, Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy was... Ren and Stimpy was Was beyond. blatantly yes. yeah, for that, adults, though. But none of that only was kids window. watched it. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. All right, uh, back to the movie, though. Part of me wishes this was constrained to the original 151 Pokemon from Gen 1. Right. But, again, we don't really understand who this movie was for. It's It's partially for people our age who have kids already that are into Pokemon. or Ryan Reynolds was Pikachu. That's what draws people our age. That's why we went and saw it. Well... I mean, yeah. I mean, you know you what I'm saying. You liked Pokemon when you were a kid, though, right? Like, right. You, I would have gone to see this regardless of who. Right, but if it was like a high pitched female voice that w- they weren't trying to be funny, uh, I, I still would have. You would have went to see it, know. but that part definitely drew more people out from our age. Okay, I, I think they're playing. Ryan Reynolds has a very unique and uh, extremely popular popular voice mainly because of his role in Deadpool yeah. even though he's playing himself half the time he's under a mask and you're not actually seeing his right. face speak so everyone's very familiar with his voice and I thought, like, I thought it was actually really good casting for the role of Pikachu if you're going to have Pikachu talk yeah because he's so witty he has to be yeah and they did the 150 million dollar budget they spent it in the right places mm-hmm. Rhyme City looked gorgeous yep the Pokemon looked fucking amazing they did. I this w- is the polar opposite of the Sonic trailer that we got two weeks ago. Yes. So that was a trip. So I did go see this movie twice. I went and saw it Thursday night when it came out. Proud I've seen it two more times than I've seen Endgame. Yeah. FYI. Yeah. You've seen um, Endgame zero times. And the only reason I saw this movie was because I'm such a dear friend to Mark. <laughs> um, and so I saw it 3D on Thursday night, and I was pretty drunk when I went to see it, so I missed a shit ton of stuff, but I do remember the Sonic trailer, because that's like right when I was getting drunk, boo, boo. and it I was like, I hate this so much, yeah, was- I wanted to punch Sonic in the face, and he doesn't deserve that, so it's whoever you guys tell me who directed it, I don't know, but they did an awful job, so... They're God, supposed I'm to be fixing it. it, but we'll see. I hope they fix a- it. Actually, you might be interested in this, so... Twitter when that trailer dropped, Twitter yeah. fucking tore it apart. Dude, you look like an idiot. To yeah, the yeah. point, to and the he had p- human teeth. He looks like an idiot. To the yeah. point where I don't know, Miss Qu- whatever. Was it was the director, the director, or visual effect artist. I don't know who it was. It was the director. It was the director. Literally tweeted and said, "We we've heard you guys. We are going to fix this." Yeah. Because there was literally random ass people taking that Sonic trailer and making that character look better with Photoshop or whatever they it's were that using. that easy. Effects. Apparently, it's they, that easy. They made his legs smaller. They made his eyes bigger. His eyes connected instead of being like... On just the, the cartoon Sonic that we exactly. know. And just it, make that guy. I don't need that yeah. like yeah. weird fur and his stupid face. Yeah. And it was, day and, it was just, day and night. And they for sure saw that from like the Sonic, whatever, these guys that are doing the movie. And they're like, okay, we did fuck up. We need to fix this. So they yeah, are supposedly sure. going to fix it. Yeah, because I do not want to go. It's like creepy. It's weird. Okay. But there's a reason why they kind of nailed it with this. And there's uh, this is an interview from Kotaku that I want to kind of quote here. The writer was asking the visual effects director, uh, you know, how they actually got this right. And they said, we worked very closely with the Pokemon company and the original creators. Uh, all the concept art was sent to Ken Sigamarodi. I think that's right. Who drew the original Pokemon art. Yeah. So that's how they got this right. Uh, very detailed notes, collaborated with them directly. Uh, they weren't only getting notes. The Pokemon company had a Pokemon expert who helped them out during filming. Every day on set, there was a Pokemon expert. Every every day, making sure they didn't mess shit up. One time, the director called Bulbasaur a he 
in a scene. And the Pokemon expert says, actually, you can't call him a he. He's genderless. Psyduck is a he for some reason. <laughs> so apparently, some of them are male and female and some of them are just it's. Hmm. I don't know. There's these really specific things they cared about and they hope to get it all right. And basically, what I'm saying is like the reason why this worked as a video game movie as opposed to every other video game movie ever that has sucked completely is that they got the people involved that actually made the characters, right. made the video games, set the stories. It kind of makes sense. Is it a video game movie, though? Yes. Detective Pikachu was an actual video game. But is that what started the whole franchise? Hey, hold on. No. What? What's your favorite... I know you were talking about the games earlier, but I don't know. I'm getting drunk. But what is your favorite Pokemon game of all time? I can tell Pokemon you what mine Snap. is. Pokemon Snap. It's got to be That's Pokemon it. Snap. No. That's it. By far. No. By far. So also, something that I thought about... Was Pokemon the, Snap with the Pokemon Party or was that different? Pokemon Party was fun too. Or it wasn't called no. Pokemon Party. What was the one where it was a bunch of Stadium? games? Yeah, maybe. Stadium was, was fun. Stadium, Stadium was, was really fun. fun. But Pokemon Snap, you know what it made me think? And because they Mewtwo was made from Mew. Remember how hard it was to get a picture of Mew? Yeah. Right? Because how fast he was? Yeah. So the first time I saw it, because I wasn't drunk right at the beginning, I started pounding anti-heroes. Um, in the theater? Yeah, because... They no, when I was a kid playing Pokemon Next Snap. Next to a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> they said, there, were oh. six, there were six people in the theater. It was 9.30 on a Thursday night. Really? Okay. Yeah. And I teach PE, so I can show up hungover. So I'm watching the opening Pokemon scene. Pokemon Red. Yeah, he, Chris Wright has a point. Go. Go on. Pokemon Red was dope. Yes, though. that's, Pokemon that's my answer, dope. by the way. But Pokemon Snap, you're playing on the N64. It was tight, right? Like... Pokemon Red, you were playing on the, what's it called? Game Boy. Game Boy. So that was fun, but I liked N64 better. In so, terms of graphics and development, yes. Pokemon Snap was like that first game where it's like, okay, this is not your typical Game Boy but, isolated characters we're getting. This but is the, point, the point I'm trying to get shit. to is what, the opening scene, you think Mewtwo like, goes and kills him, right? Yeah. And it takes like 20 seconds for him to fly to catch up to the car, right? You remember the car was speeding and you see him flying. Yeah. And then the car is speeding. He's You're saying he's flying. faster than that? He's so much faster than that. You know how hard it is to catch a picture of Mew? Yeah. We can get into this all day, though. The, wow, now we're getting into the physics of Pokemon. No, and that's why I thought it, right away, that was the first thing I thought. I was like, this is ridiculous because Mewtwo would have been there in a snap of a finger. He would have <laughs> picked the car up and thrown it down. He had to fly that far. He's He's psychic, too, right? Yes. I, it would have taken Mewtwo is everything there is. It would have taken him half a second to get there, so that was like He's know. also a bug type. I don't know if you knew that. He's a no, bug type. I didn't no, know that. That, that, that doesn't even sound he real. He is hard. healed by the we, leaf. How about we get back the to the movie? Cards? Whatever you were just talking about, go yes. back to that. Uh let's talk about the acting a little bit. Um it's the always kind of sketchy old. when you have actors who have to interact with something that isn't there. Right. Justice Smith plays Tim Goodman, who's the main character in this. I think he did a pretty good job. There are a couple scenes. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, I can kind of tell he's looking at a chair or something with like Pikachu's head posted on it. It's not actually but, Pikachu yet. I mean, the gold standard for this is obviously Michael Jordan in Space Jam when he's talking to Bugs Bunny, who yeah. isn't there. Yeah. Who's the best actor ever because Michael Jordan. Right. Uh, he's very good at a lot of things. Nobody else getting my sarcasm on this, but uh, we got it. I think he did pretty well. Still and a baseball player, too. There are also a few other things here. I'm totally blanking on this girl's name. Uh, the Lucy female lead. Stevens, that's her name in the movie, she right? Is. Suki Waterhouse. Okay. So she's got a Psyduck who steals the show, by the way. My favorite character in the entire movie. Uh, but the Pokemon expert, quote unquote, who was on set was saying, well, Psyduck would weigh roughly 40 pounds. That's very true. So though. that's really, and I he mean, looked a, like he looked like he should be 40 pounds, yes. but they put a backpack on her and she's they put running. a 40 pound weight like in yeah. the backpack. So she was like, carrying i like so that. it looked I real love that yeah i appreciate that level of detail wait they actually put a 40 pound she had to carry yeah. around when 40 she was pounds. sprinting with him that one time that was 40 pounds on her back she had 40 yeah pounds on her back yeah damn i did not realize yeah. that um, she looked very natural that's why we don't make that. movies is because yep, if you exactly. wouldn't think of that shit yep. we'd no. be like okay we'd be like whatever yeah. he's a fucking pokemon <laughs> right <laughs> we'll, we'll fucking put him on her back i think psyduck stole the show though he did now uh, just and, because he's and he did in the cartoon too yeah. He's just no, a yeah. fucking weirdo. The best, I'm telling you, I was telling you guys earlier, my favorite part was when Tim just gets to Rhyme City and 
like you didn't realize like i said i saw it twice i'm a loser and i didn't realize it the first time also i was drunk and when fucking he's about to walk up to the apartment and Psyduck's looking at him and then he sidesteps to back up behind the garbage can. Yeah, it's just it's blatantly hilarious. Yeah. I saw it. I was like, oh shit, that's because Lucy's inside. That's her Pokemon. There is a good deal of physical comedy in this, which yes. I really appreciate. Yes. So. I love, I love the, that the second time I saw it. I love the whole Psyduck getting stressed out and don't stress him out. Hilarious. His anxiety. Trying yeah. to calm him down. The whole shit around that was amazing. Uh, I did get towards the end, kind of not not I'm not mad about it, but you could tell they were kind of running out of money because you only have so much money to do thirty character designs, maybe before you get to a certain point. There are so many Pokemon that I wanted to see in this. Oh, I agree. With of that. course, yeah, yeah. They had but, they had. I looked it up. They had fifty one <laughs> Pokemon. So at a that point people though, caught, and I probably knew fifteen of them. Think about how, how much more money each. So each sequential Pokemon would cost to design. Yeah. At a certain point in the movie, you realize that like the background characters are just the same ones over and over again. I'm like you see yeah, Charmander's in the background. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. There's one Pokemon that would be pretty easily designed. Is it Diglett? I already knew it was going to be. No, di- yeah. Close man. Doug fucking trio, dude. Yeah. Doug same, trio. Same if there was a Doug trio in the force, I thought Doug trio was going to pop up or Diglett in that scene. Dude, there are it. too many or memes on the it. internet where it's like a giant thing underground and what's sticking up is actually the Diglett's wiener. <laughs> like, I can't. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm I like, wouldn't nope. have been able to take that seriously. I like Diglett a lot. Though. I, Diglett's my guy. But your girl. I don't know. Girl. I'm not. I'm not going to assume the gender on Diglett. <laughs> I bet the Pokemon expert could tell you. He probably could. Uh, was the story for this completely nonsensical? Am I thinking like too deeply into what is supposed to be a children's movie? Even if I was a child, the ending would have still made me be like, wow, that was really simple and easily resolved. I just didn't really understand the motivation for some of the characters that were moving the plot along. Like The antagonist is just like, I don't know. I, I feel weird criticizing this because it is a kid's movie it's supposed to be meant for you know a six-year-old that that can go in and understand exactly what's happening Mm -hmm. there can be plot holes and it doesn't fucking matter Mm -hmm. he can take an elevator in two seconds and it's fine yep i guess i'm overthinking it but there were some glaring potholes which i guess we'll do in spoilers yeah big big plot holes okay for sure well, we'll get to that. But and the, the reason why I won't nitpick too hard about it as well is even though there were definitely those moments where things were easily resolved, I still think the pacing of the movie was pretty well done. Even if things really didn't make sense and they were kind of jumping around a little bit, it kind of it felt like that at times. I think the pacing was good. I never there was never a point in the movie where I was just like super bored. No, nope. because there was always a Pokemon in the background. I'm just like exactly. Oh crap, that's Pidgeon. And visually, it was just always there for you. There yes. was always yes. something to grab your attention. But absolutely. Uh, before we get into spoilers, let's talk about some of the acting in this. Justice Smith, the main character Tim Goodman, was good. I like him. Yeah. He did a lot of crying. I actually really liked the first scene with his. It was his hilarious. One friend. I thought that was a, that was a cool opening scene where they were trying to catch a Pokemon. I'm like, because that was the one thing I feared going into the movie is they weren't. I don't know why I thought this. I didn't think they were going to really reference like the straight Pokemon shit. Where like when you throw the ball at the Pokemon, they're not always going to stay in the ball. Like you have to wait till that it turns green. Like the things we know through the video games, obviously. Was it- but I thought the the main thing was just going to be show a bunch of Pokemon, get us excited, and just tell a story. But and they actually it could have been if they didn't care about making a good movie. But I feel like they did. What well, yeah. was um they did reference a lot of things that we we know and love through the video games and just knowing Pokemon in general, which yeah. I liked. Was that guy Jack? He's from Deadpool or no? Yeah, I thought he's I read Dirt something. Pinder. Okay, yes. So they said that he's they tied driver. him back. Yep, Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um. I that's another scene that the first time I saw it I was just sitting there but the second time I was like this is actually fucking hilarious yeah when it's walked away when when he's walking away and he goes that cube owner reminded me a lot of my my mom I was like all right that's kind of funny Ouch. yeah okay. kind of funny though uh I, so I like that what's the verdict on this you know we have Bill Nighy who is once Minister of Magic in Harry Potter he's the yeah, that's a spoiler. I'm not going to talk about what he is. Uh, Chris Gear, who is yeah. from one of my favorite sitcoms, You're the Worst. Yeah. I have no idea who that is. Sookie Waterhouse, we already talked about. Ryan Reynolds does the voice acting. So the acting is good in this? Yes. Can we, can we yeah. agree on yeah. that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we move on, we're going to rate this. But 
is this the first ever good video game movie? Yeah, I'm still a little caught up on like what makes a video game movie because this wasn't based off of a video game. It was. The there is a fr- the Detective Pokemon Pikachu franchise. movie. I know. Or a video game, I'm sorry. But the Pokemon franchise w- didn't start with a video game. What did you start with? If they made a Mario Tennis video game. Or I'm sorry. It if they exists. made a Mario Tennis was, movie. Mario was a video game. That's how the characters so got started. was Pokemon. But Pokemon didn't get started through video games. Were you in Japan? Mario did. When it came right? are you, you are so fucking obnoxious about this right now. Are you really going to nitpick that hard? Yes, I am. I'm just thinking of the origins. I'm going to skip of, you. John, yeah. is this the first ever good video game movie? I don't know what other video game movies I've seen. So Wow. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. <laughs> yes, this is the first ever good video game movie. Yeah. The Curse is Broken. Because I do think it was good, though. I okay. Was, well, that's that so, counts. Yep. No, and if you was, can't think of another video game movie, then this is probably the this first one was good, good yes. video game movie you've seen. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because Assassin's Creed was bad. Never saw it. Mario Brothers was bad. Right. I didn't even know that movie existed. Um, let's do see it, stream it, skip it. For me, this is a see it in theaters. I think it's great on the big screen. Bring your significant other. They'll enjoy it. It's not just for video game nerds. There's a whole lot of cute shit going on. There's comedy. We talked about the hidden adult humor that there is in the background. It's totally worth seeing in the theater. I think so. I will say see it. John, since you've seen it twice. So so I've seen it twice. I've already given them 20, like seven bucks. But um, definitely see it. I Yeah. The first time I saw it, I was in and out of sleep and drunk. And I was like... I went home and I was I was telling my fucking sister how much I hated Ryan Reynolds playing the part, and I think it's because I was half asleep. The second time I saw it, it was definitely a see it. Hold on, I sure. apologize. I'm completely wrong. I legitimately thought it started as a trading card game. It I didn't. don't know why you thought that. They made no. That's I why it started they, as a trading card game. No, it's just straight cash right there. Let's make cards. Okay, I thought it was a trading card game. Yes, it started as Pokemon Red and Green. Damn, I'm wrong as blue. fuck. I feel like an idiot. No! First Started time as today, red and blue. Right? No. Began as Pokemon Red and Green, later released outside of Japan as Pokemon Red and Blue. Damn, you're well, wrong. Well, I'm not, not in Japan. Japan. Now you're the wrong right, one. Thank you. Neither of us are in Japan. It started right. in Japan, though. Let's talk about some spoilers. So spoilers from here on out. I will mark this in the show notes. Uh, we're going to talk about some plot points and stick around till the end for some recommendations. Uh, did you guys think that the R on the little canisters was code for Team Rocket? Because I definitely I did. did. I yeah. did. And I thought that the the lady that was helping the bad guy was... Um, I forgot her name. Sookie Waterhouse? No, what was the the chick in Rocket and Team Rocket? Yeah, the red-haired one. Her name. Jesse. Yes. Yep. With the Meowth. Jesse. So I thought Team Meowth Rocket was going to show originally up. was Jesse and James. Yes. I thought that was Jesse. I thought they were going to reveal her okay, as Jesse. that's fair. And Meowth was she would have show. had to have way longer hair, like sticking straight back. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I was very surprised that Meowth did not show up throughout the entire movie. I kept wait, like they even had Ghastly. Uh, yeah, no. Come all on. I kept thinking that was Gengar, but oh, it was a triple Ghastly? God, do it? you even know Pokemon, Mark? God damn it, dude! <laughs> Idiot. But no, for sure, I'm. I'm on the same page as you. I was waiting for Meowth to show up and be like, I don't know. I I just expected him. I could have watched an hour of Gengar versus Blastoise when they were in the actual arena. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I could have just watched that. Okay. Main reveal, though. Did you guys get the hint that Ryan Reynolds was going to be Justice Smith's dad and in Detective Pikachu's body? No. I no surprise know. there. No, I didn't really catch that until... I didn't catch it either. Very end. No. I was pretty sure that as soon as they said, uh, you know, they do the whole spiel, Bill Nighy does the thing like, uh, we can merge right. Pokemon souls and human bodies and yeah. whatever, vice versa. It's like, oh yeah, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, but I do think it would have been way funnier if they had stuck with Danny DeVito to be the voice of Detective Pikachu. Mm. Because at the end, Danny DeVito would have been his dad. <laughs> yes. And that would have been way better also the voice look ryan reynolds has a good voice but he's not danny devito i would have been annoyed if it was all right that's hard to say because a lot of people get annoyed with ryan reynolds voice but that's how i was the first night when i saw it would have annoyed me more if i had that voice throughout the whole movie i agree you i was honest yeah i i don't know i don't think i could have sat through 
that long with him being Danny DeVito. Okay. You're so let down by that. You're right. A little bit, because I think it would have been <laughs> pretty hilarious. But also the kids would have I would have like, just kept thinking about whores, you know. Whores. Like that's, yeah. Kids would have been like, who the fuck is this old, short, fat guy? Right. So, it's again, it's not for me. It doesn't matter. Right. Um, How did you feel about that reveal, though? Is it okay? He was hanging out with his dad the entire time and somehow mute. No, I think it all, I think it all like made sense and worked itself out. When you saw that he found the whatever the hell those stars things are called that was from the Pokemon and, and then Pikachu realized it, right? Then I was like, oh shit, like it's making sense now that Mewtwo morphed them together. Okay. So then it made sense and I was like, but they, he just cleared their memory. He wiped yeah. their memory. So I was, I was all good with it. Yep. Mark? Yep. I was fine with it. I was not, I guess, fine with what happened about five minutes before that when Mewtwo just tied everything up in a neat little bow and just solved all the problems by changing everyone back within five seconds. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I mean, generally speaking, I don't like when you have like a, a, a deus ex machina that just comes in and fixes everything. And that's exactly what he was. Yeah. And that was a whole build up is to get to that point where everyone yeah. was morphed into a Pokemon and lived in a Pokemon body. And then Mewtwo just fixed it within five seconds. But it's a ch- well, you knew like it's not a children's movie. I will not admit that because it's a kid. I thought this it's movie rated was rated PG. It's yeah. not for you. Yeah. But still, I could have surprised it was rated PG. But I also agree. Like you knew. I mean, I'm a human. So I check my phone and I was like, there's about five minutes left. So when he started, um, when what's his name had the fucking thing on his head and he was mute too. I knew I was like, there's five minutes left. Like he's about to fuck it. Something's going to happen. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be more. He, yeah, they all became their Pokemon. And then I knew I was like, there's in two minutes, none, like it's all going to be over. Yeah. So then I knew it. And then Mewtwo fixed it in five seconds. Yeah. Um, Tim came down the elevator in three seconds. Like it was, that kind know, of bothered, bothered I knew that, that shit was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. What what exactly was the main antagonist, Bill Nye? What was his goal here? Like, I get that he wants to be in yeah. Mewtwo's body because yes. Mewtwo's super powerful. He's a weird. That's a great question. But why does he want to turn everybody else into a Pokemon? So when he was so when he was doing that, I was wondering the same thing. So it got rid of all the humans, right? They mm-hmm. all went to their Pokemon bodies. And he kept talking about that because they can like evolve. Right? They evolve. But who, what the fuck does it matter? I don't know. And I still don't know. I, I don't know I either. did not get that at all. No. He, they evolve. Like, what does it matter? The one thing that I, I do understand is what he was saying about, but we don't talk about, um, the longevity of a Pokemon. How long do they live? So that's the only thing that I was thinking of. You think they live forever? I, when does a Pokemon die? Unless they're in battle. So well, they don't, ba- and they don't battle in Rhyme City. So that was the only thing that I was thinking of because like his body is fucked up. So he was thinking that I'm going to put everybody in Pokemon because Pokemon can understand each other, right? Pokemon have to die. Otherwise, you wouldn't have ghosts. Correct. But when have you seen a Pokemon die? Because even in the battles, do they die? I no, they faint. Yeah. Because it's a kid's game. Yes, they faint. So I get you almost died in Pokemon the movie. So did Charmander. Almost. Yeah. When he fucking when the, was holding the umbrella over his tail. Yeah. So I don't. Oh my god! I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I just gave you nightmares for, for the that next up, week. Dude. That was I so apologize. sad. But that's so. I think that he. That's a good question because it was never addressed. I would say that it was longevity thing. If I if everybody gets in a po- in a Pokemon's body, they'll live forever. You that's, can't. All, you, but you can't force that on people. No, he lit. Well, he did though. He I know. Like this. Which he I, just I, went like this with his hands. I guess what I'm saying is I'm questioning his motivation. It made I, no I was sense. just thinking he was like, "All right, my life sucks. I'm in this wheelchair. Um, I, I want to be in the sickest Pokemon body there is in the Pokemon and that makes with the sense. most powers." So, but the rest of the story. But yeah. I will tell you this, yeah. and I, I'm assuming we're going to get to the Ditto part. But I will tell you this: they did an awesome job. I I couldn't name a single director in the world or a, somebody who writes a script. I don't know, but they did an awesome job with leading up when they sat down for the first time and they were live on air and it was him and his son and they made his son look like the fucking bad guy. You remember that? His son was the bad guy in that scene though. No, I know. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like it may, I all, all right away. I'm like, his son's a douchebag. 
And you thought, okay, so you thought for the rest of the movie that okay, his son's yeah, a bad yeah. guy. But yep. when when was Ditto his son? All right, big Ditto was no. Whatever. So Ditto we, we're that spoiling, scene. Right? Let me yes. okay. Sure. Go ahead. Go oh, okay. So that scene, they're sitting there, and he's talking about it, and he reads the script, and then his son's like giving him shit, and he's like, yeah, 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 I read yeah, the yeah. script your people wrote, blah blah blah. Yeah. Then Ditto was right there and morphed into a human and wheeled him out. And then Ditto. That's it was a it was a Ditto that they worked on in the lab. It wasn't a normal. No, I, I know I know the Ditto was there. I'm just thinking of when so, when he was like in the car driving to the headquarters. Dude, they, all the so then he was in sunglasses. He was Ditto. So, so he was Ditto tie, in the car when he was doing all that. Correct. Shit. They smart ass Ditto. Yes. No. Because he tied his son. up. They had him tied up in the closet. All right. And wow. then trapped in the closet. Too. Yes. Exactly. How how freaky were the Ditto eyes? When Ditto was like all those different yeah, speaking people. Speaking of him. nightmares. That was- See, but I didn't think, okay, that was a part that I, when I was watching it, when his, um, when Lucy popped up, that's her name, right? I, Not, sure. It is. It's, I think it's Lucy Steve. Well, when he, when Ditto morphed into her and he was like, oh, I'm going to have, that was the one part where I was like, that was bad acting. Yeah. Because so. you don't. It's not her. Knock the bitch out. It's not your girlfriend. Yeah. You can literally hit her in the face. It's a ditto. Yeah. You're allowed to hit a ditto. There's you can no- see those creepy ass eyes. I'd swing at whoever. If that exactly. was my mother with those creepy so eyes, I I'd just, swing that, at my mom. That, that like five seconds where he, he made a joke and people laughed. I didn't think it was funny. I thought like you would just swing in that situation. It's not. That's loose. fair. Uh, so what else do we want to talk about? The funniest part of this was obviously Pikachu singing the original opening song to the cartoon. Yeah, While, very like, sad crying. Yeah. While crying. Funniest part, right? Yeah. I didn't think it was that funny. Okay. Well, fuck you. Uh, what was the funniest the part then? Funniest part was, I think we. Mr. Agreed. Mine, Mr. Mine, boy. Mr. Mine, Mr. Mine, he, Mr. Mine part dude, was the That was fucking hilarious. Yes. That was pretty when dark. When he tried. Okay. So that. <laughs> when he. It was <laughs> super dark. When he tried running up and fucking hit the glass. <laughs> Opened the door, sat down next to him, just like I'm sitting. When he's like, when he's pouring and himself he started, a drink. Well, yes. <laughs> that was so funny. And then he put the match out and then lit another match and accidentally dropped it. I thought that shit was hilarious. And it's one of those things I looked up and it said that that scene, they actually, um, didn't approve it at first, but it did so well. Um, it did so well in their, like, whatever it's called. Pre-screening. Their, whatever yeah, pre-screening yeah. shit. Audience testing. It did so yeah. well that they had to keep it. That yeah, was the, it. that shit was hilarious. It was. It I was thought good. it was hilarious. Good scene. I like the lick a tongue scene. scene where also the hilarious. Yeah. Yep. Very funny. Uh, it, look, it's, this is a comedy, right? Yeah. There's a little, little bit of action in there, but I think overall it's a comedy, and I think it was very funny. It, it, it earned its laughs. So that's why I can recommend this. What was the one Pokemon you were upset not to see in this? Um, basically any of the legendary Pokemon outside of Mewtwo, like Articuno, yeah. Zapdos. Yep. Yeah. Yep. However, Articuno, if you notice in, um, I'm blanking his name, Justice Smith's room. Tim. Yeah, in Tim's yeah, room. The, did he have a poster? He had a poster. Had? There was like Articuno versus like some other fight Pokemon. posters. Yeah. Also, that was hilarious posters. when he had how he had the Pikachu ears. I yeah. forgot about that. On the bad, yeah. That was funny. No, I, I mean, I was pretty satisfied with the representation of different Pokemon here. It, Meowth. Look, I, I, w- I thought Meowth was going to make an appearance. I always will want to see more of them. I was surprised there wasn't a, um, a Venusaur. That's fair. Because yeah. they showed Gyarados. They showed... Um, not bubble server. They showed uh, Blastoise. They showed Charizard. They showed all those, all the fully evolved Gen ones. F- oh Gen- yeah, yeah, not yeah. just Gen ones. Those were the actual. I don't like the first twenty or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which don't. It doesn't really matter. They're still Gen one, but those are the biggest name Pokemon. Yeah, that's where fair. they're in their third evolution. What does Magikarp turn into? Gyarados. That was that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that's a callback to the cartoon. Yeah, because when Jesse has a Magikarp, he kicks yeah. it. Yes. It turns into gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that was that was cool too. Yeah. Um I don't know, man. Overall, good movie. Anything else? I'll go watch the shit out of these movies if they keep pumping. I will one hundred percent buy this on Blu-ray from Family Video via our link. And I don't know if you looked into it, (laughs) but do they actually have the rights to all the Pokemon? I think they would have to. I think so too. Because I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. From our age seeing this movie, the first thing I thought is like, oh, they've been showing too many Charmander scenes and like they're I, utilizing like specific amounts of Pokemon, but they yes. did use fifty, okay. and they were all from different generations. But so. again, I think the reason for that is 
once you have the character design for one, you can keep reusing it, and it's yeah. way less expensive. And you don't have to. You don't have to redesign something completely, right? So that has yeah. to be why. Uh, anything else before we move on to the recommendations? I thought this movie was great. Great, uh, I loved it, dude. Recommendations from here on out, John. What have you been watching, reading? doing oh, yeah and I mark give, i'll let you go first i didn't give you a heads up if you have a recommendation I, if you've been no idea go ahead john has been doing shit nope john i recommend you've just been watching Light. ncis i literally I go to work i drive an hour to work um then i coach a baseball team that's below average um i wonder why they're not very good then I probably because of their coach then i drive an hour and 20 minutes home because there's traffic and then i have a few bud lights and i go to bed and then i repeat so go ahead mark damn I'm going to recommend Ascender, which is a comic book we read. It was called Descender, um, and that was the first installment. Now they have a sequel called Ascender. It's written by Jeff Lemire, and the illustration is done by Dustin Dustin Wynn. Wynn. I believe Descender came out in 2016, but they just came out with Ascender. Takes It's a sequel. takes place 10 years later. I believe issue 2 came out, but I just read issue 1. Off to an extremely good start. So if you're into comic books... Definitely read Descender. It came out a few years ago. And check out Ascender once you get through that. By the way, Sony is producing a Descender movie. Of course, because the best movies are always based off comic books. Hmm, sometimes. Um, Titanic, I guess. And Pearl wow. Harbor. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want to stab you right now. So I'm going to get through this so I can stab you after we get off air. Uh, my recommendation is actually uh, via Brick. He's not here this week, but his legacy lives on, even though he's in Denver. Uh, he recommended Dead to Me, which is a new show on Netflix. Stars Christina Applegate, and I'm blanking on her name, but she's in Silicon Valley, and she's in Grandma's Boy. She's the main love interest of... Ah, it doesn't I matter. I can't think of her name either. I know who you're talking about, though. Anyways, uh, so it's kind of like a dark comedy, and that's the best way I can describe it. I'm only one episode in, but it's really intriguing thus far. Basically, they're both characters who are dealing with the loss of loved ones or maybe not or maybe everything's not what it seems is it linda cardellini yes that is her name thank you yep uh i'm gonna keep watching this i believe there are 10 episodes they're about 30 minutes a pop okay we only watched one episode last night erica and i my wife and uh wait is it a comedy did you say it's a dark comedy okay so there's some mystery there but it's kind of like Barry has that kind of vibe. Not yeah, really. probably less comedy than Barry. But yes, uh, I, I would put it in that same realm. Uh, that's my recommendation, though. Dead to me on Netflix. So uh, we want to thank everybody that tuned in to episode 142. Jesus. So I have no. I, oh, I'm you going. you actually yes. got one. Go yes. ahead, John. I so I was thinking NCIS, Chicago Fire, Chicago <laughs> Med. No, I was going to say. Um, if you haven't seen Bates Motel, check it out. It's pretty good. I haven't seen Bates Motel. It came out like 12 years ago. I, know. I was going to say it? the TV show it, it or the FX, TV right? Show. That was FX. It was FX. Yes. Okay. I check it out. So if you haven't seen it, the kid and the mom are fucking weird and I, I think they have sex with each other. But <laughs> check it out. <laughs> All right. We're going to end it with Back that. Back to the outro. <laughs> Great note to end on right there. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in to episode 142 of the Chumpcast. You can always find us on social media at the Chumpcast. You can call or text us at 847-920-6107. John, I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Mark, until next time. Jumps out, motherfuckers. Thank <laughs> you.